Today's video is sponsored by Beatrice Muiruri, a true patriot and a Kenyan nationalist at heart. If there's one thing that we find ourselves doing as a country every so often is hosting top tier world leaders in this country like we did during the tenure of uh, Uru Kenyatta. We found ourselves hosting President Barack Obama while he was sitting president of the United States. And during such moments, the Kenyan government likes displaying a great sense of order. Like we saw when uh, Barack Obama was visiting Kenya, suddenly we were planting grass along malleable pathways. And soon after he left, the grass was forgotten, it dried out, and since then, nothing has been done about it. And now, as a country, we are expected to host King Charles of England next week. So what are some of the things that the government is doing in preparation for King Charles to visit Kenya? Now, first up, I've seen that Governor Sakaja came out yesterday, and he vehemently condemned any form of hawking in Nairobi CBD, especially those who do not have a designated area but are practicing their craft along pathways meant for vehicles, such as the image you're having on your screen right now. And here's the governor's exact words on the same. There will be no walking on the road. Kutandika vitu kwa barabara? Zero. That one we will not have. That one is an irreducible minimum, even for their own safety. We will not have any hawking on the roads. You start enforcing it from tomorrow morning in the streets at Apo Mudurwa, Apo bus station. If they are inside a small section, it is okay. We agree with the timings and we'll have that discussion now, now, now with them. But on the road is an irreducible minimum. Barabara ni agari kutembea. Sawa, sawa. And in this meeting, I will want Akumali to tell us Pallet, ineto pallet ama pallet. Iyo kitu ya kutandaza. Ni size gani inaka aje na inaeko wapi. Wengine wamejenga mpaka mawe. Town. Ati kuuza kwa mawe umeseti. It's like you're building another building. Now in Governor Sakaja's speech, there is nowhere that he mentioned King Charles and his visitation. But based on the timings, I'm looking at this as a cleanup job ahead of the king's visitation to the county. Because remember, in the past, Sakaja had blowback when he tried to remove Matatus. The deputy president told him, those are the hustlers who voted for us. But this time around, he's moving out all the hawkers. And there's no commentary because I believe this is something they discussed in a roundtable meeting. And having law and order in Nairobi, which is going to be the first contact point of the king when he lands at JKIA, is something that is paramount to this administration. But beyond the king even arriving here, there is enough grounds for some of the hawkers to be moved. As you've seen in that image, hawking on the roadside, which is supposed to be parking space, I think that is misbehavior. Again, I've also seen other people complaining that there are people who will pay for the floor space, meaning rent. They will pay Kanjo, they will pay all the licenses that is required to operate, and also tax. But then hawkers just come with guneas and they set up in front of your shop, selling the same product as you, but at a lower rate because they don't have all these uh, liabilities. So they end up selling more than even some of the shop owners. That is something that people are complaining about. Although for me, I feel time wastage is the greatest problem. If moving from point A to B takes five minutes, with hawkers on pathways, that will take you 20 minutes. That's the challenge we are facing in Nairobi. In fact, most of the times when you're walking, you'll find yourself on the road because the pathway you should be using is now a mini market. Now, the second thing we've seen the Kenya Kwanza administration doing in preparation of King Charles' visit is the president and our top security forces ensuring that security is in top-notch condition. In this image, you can see President William Ruto conducting his own inspection ahead of the king's visit. And if you look at his entourage, you can tell that security is one of the top things Things in their discussions because you can see Aden Dwale there to the left the CS of defense and to the right which is the president's left you can see the chief of general staff Francis Ogola so security is something that they want to get correct more than anything else in fact forget the aesthetics of planting grass removing hawkers and doing all that security 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 that is the main concern anytime anybody is hosting somebody of high caliber now why on earth is King Charles visiting Kenya 
I believe it is to follow the footsteps of Queen Elizabeth who visited Kenya in her teens. But according to me, if the colonial powers who made our great grandparents go through hell on this earth, if that same leader is going to come into this country, we need to discuss reparations. We need to be seriously compensated for all the wrongdoings that they did to our people. From picking cotton, wearing a kipande on your neck that was weighing a kilogram or two for you to be able to move freely in your own country. Women being raped, even men were raped because the people who came here, some of them were even homosexuals. And also all the unjustifiable deaths that took place. These are things that the king needs to address. Him being the king, he's the most appropriate person to address this and to address it while here in Kenya. In fact, we would love to see a protest about uh, reparations. Because you can't commit historical injustice and then just show up and be received as a king. The man has to pay for what happened to Kenyans back in the day. And at the very least, he has to be remorseful in his speech. In fact, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs should just write to King Charles and ask him, in your speech, are you going to be courteous enough to ask for forgiveness for the sins of your forefathers on this land? Failure to which he should be barred from accessing this country. But as usual, guys, that's just my opinion. Do drop me your comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best to read them and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula, hit the subscribe button you're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature if politics is something you're passionate about this is definitely the one channel that you really really need to subscribe to all right guys adios Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.